Recently, I did a video where I ranked various telling window managers that I have used in the past, and I did a tier list ranking of like 11 telling window managers. And that was a really fun video. That was the very first video I'd ever done in that tier list format. So today I thought I would do another one. This time I'm going to do a tier list ranking of text editors. I have 14 text editors that I've used enough that I feel comfortable that I can break them down into appropriate tiers. So let's get started. So let me switch over to my desktop. And once again, I'm just going to do this using GIMP because GIMP of course is free and open source software and I've already got my uh, tier list image that I created the other day for the tiling window manager list. We're just going to use that exact same tier list. So we're going to have five categories, great, good, okay, meh, and yuck. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and I'll call this the list. I'm going to create a list of the text editors here and let's pick a different color. Let's go with white for the text. And let me paste those there. Oh, that's a really big text. Let me make that quite a bit smaller. So these are the text editors I'm going to be ranking. I'm going to be ranking Adam, Ed, Emacs, Genie, Gedit, Gvim, Cacoon, Kate, Micro, Nano, NeoVim, Notepad QQ, VI, and Vim. And of course, I picked these 14 text editors because I've actually used these. I, I know these well enough that I feel like I can rank them. Of course, there's many text editors out there. Many, there's a hundred of them, right? And I haven't used many of them, or if, if I have used them, I haven't used them enough to where I would feel comfortable giving them a ranking. But I feel pretty good with these. So let's start in alphabetical order here with Adam. But let me go ahead and create a new layer here in GIMP. And what layer is Adam going to go in? Uh, I have to put it in this yuck category here. So let's go ahead and add Adam to this category. Let me make the text a little bigger here so you guys can see that. So why is Adam going in the yuck category? Well, I, for me, it is here for one reason mainly. It is an Electron app and it is very, very slow and buggy. When you launch Atom, it can take forever and a day for the program to actually open. I'm talking about 30 seconds to a minute. And, you know, that's just not acceptable for people that use text editors all the time. You know, just having to wait a minute every time you want to open a text editor, that, that's just not going to fly, right? The fact that that it's an Electron app is an issue when, especially being a text editor, why does it need to be an Electron app? I know a lot of people write these things in Electron because cross-platform compatibility, it makes writing your application for Windows, Mac, and Linux, all three platforms easier, but at the same time, you do sacrifice a lot when you create these applications using Electron. So for me, Adam is mainly in the Yuck category because of speed and performance uh, as, and stability, right? As, as long as it's as slow and unstable as it currently is, it has no choice but to be in the yuck category. Moving on to the next editor, we have Ed, or ED, and we're just gonna stay in this yuck category because uh, Ed ha has to be in the yuck category because for those of you not familiar with this text editor, because most people probably aren't familiar with it, Ed was a text editor that was created back in the 1960s and computing was very different back in the 1960s. Many computers didn't even have displays. You didn't have monitors hooked up. You typically didn't edit text, you know, the way you do it now where you edit an entire file. Ed is really a line editor where you feed a line of text into Ed and then do whatever editing you need to do. And, and then Ed back in the 1960s would actually print out those changes for you. It was really designed for a completely different era of computing. Ed is simply not appropriate for modern text editing. Can you do it? Yes. I know enough about Ed to where if I had to use it for simple editing of config files, I can do it. It is not a fun experience. And if I had to do like a massive project, like you wouldn't write your doctoral dissertation in Ed, right? You're not going to write your next novel using Ed. You just wouldn't do it. It would be extremely painful. You'd probably end up having like a, a whole lot of stomach ulcers <laughs> by the time you got done with the, a project like that using the Ed editor. And the next editor we're going to rank is Emacs. So let me create a new layer. I wonder where Emacs is going to go. I'm going to put Emacs in the great layer because that really 
is the only appropriate place to put it because Emacs pretty much can do anything. When you talk about flexibility, customization, extensibility, Emacs literally can be anything. Whatever you can imagine, Emacs can make it happen. And in terms of extensibility, Emacs is really unrivaled with anything else in this list because of the nature of Emacs. Emacs is an ELISP interpreter, Emacs Lisp interpreter, and because it's the interpreter of its own programming language and that everything is written in that language, it makes it a very unique situation where pretty much any piece of code you write using Emacs Lisp, that particular language, well, Emacs can interpret it for you, right? So you can write your command line programs and GUI programs or whatever. You can write these Emacs specific programs and it just, it, it offers you a level of power that you just won't you won't find that anywhere else one cool thing about emacs is you have the traditional emacs key bindings you know the key chords which usually involve the control key you know control x control s and yada 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 then you also have evil mode in emacs so you can actually get vim like key bindings if you prefer that and that's what i use you can uh, use traditional like Kua bindings. You can do even Kakoon like bindings, I'm sure. I, there's probably ID emulation la layers for Emacs if you wanted to do things the, the ID way. Uh, Emacs is, is again, it's, it's got so much to it that I, I've done plenty of videos about Emacs. I won't spend too much more time on that. The next text editor we should talk about is Genie. Now which layer is Genie gonna go in? Well, let me create a new layer because I'm going to go ahead and put Genie in the good layer. And why is Genie going in the good layer? Because Genie is a very easy to get into IDE. It's a little more than a text editor. It's got some extensions to it. It even has a nice Vim emulation plugin that you can activate if you prefer Vim key bindings. It has a you know, syntax highlighting and line numbers and you know a lot of things that you would expect in modern text editors. But Genie is also very new user friendly, right? It's because it's got traditional toolbars and menu systems and you know anybody on day one can figure out exactly Exactly how to use Genie. You can figure out pretty much everything there is to know about it, and it's just a fantastic program. And the next editor in our list is Gedit. Let me go ahead and create a new layer for Gedit because this is going to be the first text editor that I place in the meh category. So why is Gedit just meh? Well, it's a very, very plain, basic text editor. It has some extensions available, but it's and there's not a lot of extensions out there, right? It, it doesn't have the same kind of extensibility. It doesn't have the same kind of extension ecosystem that things like you know, Emacs and the various flavors of Vim. And, you know, it, it's not going to have that kind of thing going on. It's very if you're used to, you know, really plain vanilla things like, you know, Windows Notepad, for example, you know, it's just a text editor and not much else. It's, all it's designed to do is to give you a way to edit some plain text. Gedit is okay, but once you demand more out of your text editor, you're going to want something better than Gedit. Next up, we have GVim. Now, there are three or four different VI slash Vim related uh, programs here. GVim is the first one we get to alphabetically, and it is by far the worst one. So GVim, really, I have no choice but to put it down here with Adam and Ed. So the reason GVim goes in the yuck category is because unlike Emacs, which has the GUI version, which most people use the GUI Emacs, Emacs can also be run in a terminal if you need to. You know, if you don't have a graphical environment available to you, then you'd have to run Emacs, you know, at a TTY, for example. Where Vim is the opposite. Vim is really designed to be run in the terminal, but there is a GUI version that they also develop called GVim. But unlike Emacs, where everybody uses the GUI version because it's fantastic, you know, with the variable fonts, the font rendering looks really good. You know, of course, you can display images and stuff like that because it's a graphical program. GVim. It's just really bad. It doesn't look good. Nothing looks good in it. I images and variable text and all of that. And it's it's really kind of a gimped version of Vim. It is 
it's so bad. Like I, 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 you never meet a Vim user when you ask them, you know, what Vim they use, whether it be Vim or Neo Vim or Vim emulation and something like Emacs or Genie. You never meet a Vim user and they say, "Well, I use GVim." <laughs> like, like that would be the last thing you would expect a Vim user to actually be using because, again, it's just. It's not good. And I think part of the reason it's not good is because the same people that develop GVim are the people that develop proper Vim. And of course, they don't probably spend any time at all on GVim. It, it seems like it's more of an afterthought. Next up in the list is Cacoon. Now, let me go ahead and create a new layer because this is going to be the first editor that I'm going to place in the OK layer. Now, Cacoon is very similar actually to Vim. Uh, Vim and Cacoon share a lot of similarities. The one thing I will say about Cacoon, uh, the key bindings are slightly different than Vim. Things are a in a little different order as far as the key bindings, which makes switching between Vim and Cacoon kind of tough. So if you're going to learn Cacoon, learn Cacoon. If you're going to learn Vim, learn Vim. But it, it is kind of hard to go between the two different editors because it, it gets really confusing. But in many ways, a lot of the really great things that Vim gets right, Cacoon also gets right. It's only going to be in the OK category, mainly because Cacoon lacks a lot of users. And because of that, it also lacks a lot of the plugins that things like Vim and Emacs would have, you know, where you can literally go find thousands and thousands of plugins and extensions for some of these other editors. Cacoon is kind of lacking in that department, but just the base Cacoon package, you know, even without really extending it or customizing it or configuring it in any way, Cacoon is a very capable editor and I would be happy using it full time if I needed to. Next up on the list is Kate, and Kate is going to go down here in the meh category, right alongside gedit. And the reason it's going to go in the category down here with gedit in the meh category is a lot of the same reasons why I put gedit there. Kate is kind of just another text editor. It really doesn't do anything special. It's kind of a uh, plain limiting has some some extensions kind of like gedit you can extend it in some ways but not the kind of ways that you can some of the other editors on this list and for that kate and gedit they're just another text editor right there's really not much else to say about those particular editors next up on the list is micro which is another terminal based text editor and micro has to go in the good uh, category. Uh, it, it's not going to go into the great category because micro is still kind of your typical plain text editor. You know, it doesn't have the same kind of really cool fancy key bindings and macros and command modes and things that things like Vim and Cacoon and Emacs have. Micro is a much more simplistic text editor, but it does come with some extensions as far as syntax highlighting and line numbering. Think of Micro as Nano, except Nano if it was actually designed to be good. Right? Micro is Nano on steroids. And if you're currently a Nano user, I strongly urge you you know, if for some reason you need a terminal text editor and for whatever reason you've been avoiding Vim, I think you should learn Vim. But if you're a nano user, definitely check out Micro because I think you're going to be amazed at what you can do with Micro. I've done a video on Micro in the past. Check out that video. Next up on the list is what we were just talking about, Nano, and I've already told you it's not as good as Micro, but how much worse is it than Micro? I would say quite a bit worse. I think Nano has to go in the meh category. Much like Gedit, much like Kate, Nano, it's just a text editor. Not much else to it. There's really not much to say. Yes, it has a few extensions, kind of like Gedit and Kate. It's not extensible to the same degree as most of the other editors on the list. So it's just meh. What really hurts Nano, in my opinion, too, is the key bindings that are there for Nano. The key bindings don't make any real sense. I've never liked the key bindings. It's confusing as hell. Now, luckily, Nano gives you a cheat sheet at the bottom of the screen to tell you what some of the important key bindings are. But they're not like key bindings you've ever used in any other text editor or any other program, period, right? So they, mentally, you're going to struggle learning those nano key bindings. And honestly, if you're going to learn key bindings, you probably should just learn a better text editor than nano. Next up is NeoVim. Now, NeoVim is uh, uh, basically a modern version of Vim. Not that, you know, regular Vim is still being 
developed and probably most Vim users actually do use regular Vim. NeoVim is a modern fork of it that is designed really to I guess be an improvement on Vim because instead of using Vim script, which is the scripting language that Vim invented for you to write plugins in and extend Vim, NeoVim chooses to be extensible with the Lua programming language. So you get a proper programming language that you can actually use to extend NeoVim. But honestly, NeoVim and Vim, other than, you know, the different languages as far as what you're writing your plugins in they're essentially the same editor they're not there's not enough difference between neovim and vim for me to really talk <laughs> about them in a, a different way so i'm actually just going to go ahead and kill two birds with one stone since they're so much alike neovim and vim both belong up here in the great category right alongside emacs i think that's the the most appropriate place and what makes Emacs, NeoVim, and Vim in the great category, all three, because they all have the same qualities, is the fact that you have these fantastic key bindings that you can move around a document very, very quickly with their key bindings. The fact that you have macros available, which makes manipulating uh, really complicated things, you know, with the text, you know, you, you know, like if you want to uh, every third line do this, you know, you can actually set a macro to do that. You have command mode where you can run certain terminal commands, for example, and get the output placed inside your document, yada, yada, yada. They're really fascinating features to all three of those in the great tier. That is why they're there. Now, moving on, we have Notepad QQ. Where is Notepad QQ going to go? I'm going to put Notepad QQ, and this might surprise some people. I'm going to put that all the way up in the good category. Now, Notepad QQ is interesting because it is another very plain text editor. There's not a lot to it. It's not extensible, you know, which I, I know I docked a lot of these down here for not being extensible. But what makes Notepad QQ kind of interesting is some of the features it does have. It has this really neat feature where when you have various tabs open in Notepad QQ because you can work with tabs, meaning you know you have different files open and they're all tabs. But say I've got like 15 different tabs for 15 different documents that I'm editing and I just close Notepad QQ, I don't save anything, right? Well, it, you don't get a warning or anything. Hey, you want to save before you close? No, it, Notepad QQ doesn't care. You know why it doesn't care? It's because when you open up Notepad QQ the next time, it still has those documents with all this, the changes there, even though you never really saved them, it still has how they were when you last edited them. That's a really neat feature. Really, for that feature alone, I can understand why a lot of people uh, love this particular program. A lot of people also with Notepad uh, QQ, the reason they use it, and I, it's only got one D in that, dummy. The reason a lot of people use Notepad QQ is essentially it is our uh, Linux fork for Notepad++ because Notepad++ is a Windows only program. So someone wrote Notepad QQ for Linux and in many ways it mimics Notepad++ pretty faithfully. And we're nearing the end of the list. All we have left is VI and Vim. Vim I've already placed. VI will be the last one. Where does VI go? And for me, VI kind of has to go in the OK tier here. So let's see. VI, you know, that's the old OG editor, right? It's uh, almost as old as Ed. Ed came out in the late 60s, I want to say 68, 69. VI came out in the very early 1970s. So again, very ancient text editor, except VI does it is actually designed to be a proper text editor where again ed is designed to be strictly a line editor so vi you can actually use now the reason i dock it and i say it's just an okay editor is because vi does not have the same kind of features that proper vim has right because vim remember actually stands for vi improved right it's a better vi so if you're going to use vi really just use vim or neo vim if you prefer if you want to you know config using the lua language or evil mode in emacs right that's all much better options than vi vi typically it's not something people choose to use. VI typically is the editor you use on Unix-like operating systems when it's the only editor there, which is often the case. You will often remote into a server, and when you get there, 
the only system text editor that's actually installed is VI because VI is almost always installed on a Unix like operating system. So if it's there, if it's the only thing available, I'll use it. Do I like it? No, I would much prefer if Vim was installed out of the box on servers, but most most distributions don't do this. I know, for example, Ubuntu server, they don't install Vim out of the box. I believe VI, VI might be there. I know Nano is there, but Nano, Nano's even worse than VI in my opinion. But you know, again, these are more of like emergency editors. Like if you have to use them, it's a good idea to, to know how to use them. But, you know, the great tier, right? These are the editors you actually go and install if you can, right? Now, just briefly, because I know I'm going to get some comments in the comment section below and why I chose these particular editors and why there's some notable exceptions missing from the text editor list here is because I don't know enough about these to comment on them. So I know people are going to ask me specifically about Sublime Text, the IntelliJ editors, and VS Code. Well, let's start with Sublime Text and all of the IntelliJ stuff. All of that stuff is proprietary software. I use free and open source software. Everything here is free and open source software. That's what I try to stick to in my personal use and it's what I try to promote on this channel. Sublime Text, I know has millions of users out there and I know Sublime Text is probably a fantastic product. It is proprietary software, therefore I've never used it. I don't know anything about it. I don't plan on ever using it. Now VS Code, is a Microsoft product and in its early days it was proprietary now it is actually open source software but the proper VS code that Microsoft distributes the binaries that they distribute from their website are actually licensed under a proprietary license rather than free and open source licensing also proper VS code has some telemetry which may or may not be an issue for you for me <sighs> It wouldn't be that big of a deal. I know it's a big deal for a lot of people, but there is a fork of VS Code called VS Codium, which removes the Microsoft telemetry and is it's actually proper free and open source software. So I would have no problem actually using VS Code or one of the free you know forks like VS Codium, but I never have. And having never actually used it, obviously, I can't give it a proper ranking on this list. So this is my ranking here of these 14 text editors that I've used enough that I feel pretty confident that you know I can give them a fair ranking. Although I know many people are gonna disagree with my ranking in the comments below and that's fine if you got some thoughts or if you want to share your rankings on your favorite text editors share it with us in the comments below now before I go I need to thank a few special people I need to thank the producers of this episode Dustin Gabe James Matt Maxim Michael Paul Wes one your bald homie Alan Armored Dragon Chuck Commander Angry Diokai Dylan Marstrom Erjan Alexander Peace Arch and Polytech Realities for Less Red Prophet Steven Tools Devler and Willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys this episode would not have been possible the show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen all these names you're seeing on the screen right now these are all my supporters over on patreon because i don't have any corporate sponsors i'm sponsored by you guys the community if you like my work and want more videos about free and open source software subscribe to distrotube over on patreon all right guys peace i really trolled you guys with that thumbnail